Hi everyone, you having a good time? Me too. This is so touching to me. I, I was just saying to Mary Sice, it's inconceivable to me that it's been 20 years since the inception of ASEP. What I'm going to talk with you about today is ways to upgrade your client's relationship with their personal power to develop ethical personal power skills. Now, believe it or not, that was me at about age five, six, somewhere in there. And around the time that this photograph was taken, our family got a New Year's card, a UNICEF New Year's card. You all know UNICEF, United Nations International Children's Fund. And the New Year's card had a message that when I read it, it went straight into the core of my being at a level that I didn't have a way of knowing back then was going to really impact the trajectory of my life. And the words are with me to this day. And those words are, the greater peace will only come after the smaller peace we make with each other. And what I would add is the smaller peace we make within ourselves. Well, in contrast to that, today we have a different kind of environment than that, uh, that wish that UNICEF had back in 1950, whatever it was, 59, uh, 60, somewhere in there. We have bias, antagonism, polarization, opposition, uh, all, all kinds of ugly stuff. Uh, you, you read something about that? You heard something about that? <laughs> Unless you've been hiding under a rock, which you may be better off there, but <laughs> otherwise, you're well aware of that. Our society is massively infected by damaging distortions in how power is expressed and equally dysfunctional distortions and reactions around power abuse. The daily parade of dysfunctional power abuse is relentless, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, think about this for a moment. What is this social climate doing to your clients? You see, many clients believe that personal power means being a coercive, competitive tyrant. It's the only version of power many of our clients have ever been exposed to, and chances are very good, uh, with very few exceptions with, uh, with people who come to us as clients, is they're allergic to that. They don't want that, and they may never have been exposed to another relationship with power than that one. And that misunderstanding of what, of what personal power is, is incredibly self-defeating. We, we are who can help our clients develop right relationship with their personal power. So what I'm going to be covering with you in this talk is three tactics that are poisoning our clients' relationships with power. I'm going to define ethical personal power effectiveness and the ingredients that I have seen build that. And we're going to cover three beliefs that block those ingredients that are the foundation of ethical personal power, those being self-responsibility, transparency, and co-creation. So the three tactics that are damaging our clients' relationships with power, in my experience, have to do with variations on authority shadow. That's a form of shadow that I don't see being addressed often enough. Shadow issues related to authority. The first dysfunctional power tactic is no without a better yes. This is one of the things that we often are going to be helping parents with. When they have to set a boundary with a child, they, they need to say no. But if they leave it to a child to figure out what yes is on their own, what are the odds that the kid's going to figure that out themselves? No without a yes is a dysfunctional power tactic that we end up 
perpetrating as adults because that's part of what was too often role modeled in too many situations, not only in families but elsewhere like in school, etc. when we were growing up. And the way that shows up as adults is in rebellion, defiance, and opposition. No without a better yes is a dysfunctional power tactic. The second dysfunctional power tactic that I've seen people try is the opposite of that. It's learned helplessness. It's burying your head <laughs> in the sand or fleeing. It's that sense of, I can't do anything to change the situation. I can't have impact in my spheres of influence. So I, somebody else is going to have to do that if anyone else can. All I can do is work on me. And if you don't like who I am, that's your problem. The third dysfunctional power tactic is the frustrated crusader, the, the people who are all about social change. And they're really doing their best to try to create positive impact in the world, except they're being driven from shadow that's undermining their noble intentions because they're, they're actually frustrated crusaders. They're trying to bleed blood out of turnips. They're trying to make the unteachable see the light. That's a low odds game. Now that's different, by the way, from playing Johnny or Janie Appleseed, where we're planting seeds that might sprout in the future without attachment to whether we ever see those seeds sprout. I'm talking about people who won't give up the ghost. They keep insisting that the people around them see the light, but they've surrounded themselves with people who refuse to see the light. It's a low odds tactic. That's dysfunctional power. Because rebelling, the first dysfunctional power tactic, invites retaliation. Ignoring, sticking our head in the sand, keeps tyrants in power. And offering solutions to the unteachable, like I said, wastes energy. Fortunately, there's a better way. There are better ways to express personal power for you, for your clients, and for our society. So this leads into what is ethical personal power effectiveness, right relationship with power. Well, personal power tends to be seen as acting in ways that take care of me or influence others and events. I would propose that that is a unhelpfully too narrow definition. So I would call that true but incomplete. And in some, some cases, true but not useful. Ethical personal power effectiveness is acting in masterful ways that honor my well-being and uplift others. Let me say that again. The way I define ethical personal power effectiveness is acting in ways that are masterful and that honor my well-being and uplift others. Well, that is true but not useful as well unless we have the building blocks that enable us to walk our talk and enable us to help our clients walk their talk. So what I have seen is that there are three keys, key, three keys to ethical effectiveness with personal power and those are self-responsibility, transparency, and co-creation. So let's unpack those three ingredients. Self-responsibility. Here's how I define self-responsibility. Self-responsibility is taking responsibility, taking ownership of the narratives I adopt, the stories I tell myself about the meaning of what's going on inside me or around me, the emotions that those narratives that I invent activate in me, my words and actions that result from the emotions that I'm having as a result of the stories I'm telling myself, and the impacts of my words and actions on myself and others. That's how I define self-responsibility. So here's my question to you. What percentage of your clients actually have high-level self-responsibility competence within that definition. How many of you think 
100% of your clients have that? How many of you think half of your clients have that? Good, good on you. How many of you think maybe a quarter of your clients have that? Good. How many of you think that it's less than 10% of your clients who come to you without that level of self-responsibility? Yeah. Well, if we're some, somewhere between 10 and 25%, there were a couple of you that said 50%, and bless you for that, that's brilliant. Think about the impact of that on our society, that, that smaller percentage of people who even understand what self-responsibility is, let alone be able to walk that in their lives. The limiting beliefs, the psychological, psychoenergetic reversals that block self-responsibility include fear of feeling guilty if I take responsibility. If I take responsibility, then I'm going to go into shame. And another one is if I am self-responsible, the perpetrator, the, per the person or people or group that are doing things that are unacceptable will get away with continuing to do the unacceptable, so I can't take responsibility or I'm letting them off the hook. Those are reversals that need to be identified and treated when they're, when they're present. Which leads to my second question. How attentive and proficient are you in helping your clients become more fully self-responsible? And I'm not going to ask for a show of hands here on this one, but what I'm talking about is three levels of intervention that are not interchangeable. They're not pick one and, and ignore the others. They are all together. They're a package. Elevating mindset. How attentive and proficient are you at helping clients elevate their understanding about, their mindset about self-responsibility? How attentive and proficient are you at removing, helping your clients remove their reversals, their blocks to stepping into full shame-free self-responsibility. And how attentive and proficient are you at helping your clients upgrade the life skills they need to upgrade in order to walk the talk of self-responsibility? Second power key is transparency. One of the problems that I see, and I imagine you do too, is that what most people call transparency isn't. Transparency is not claiming, well, that's just the way I am, as a way of giving myself a pass card on harmful impact. Transparency is not telling others about them. That's not transparency. Transparency is not presenting interpretations as though they're facts, or thoughts and judgments as though they're feelings. You know the famous statement that, uh, that people will often make when they're, when they're learning how to do I statements and they don't really have a feel for self-responsibility. Well, I feel that you are, <laughs> right? Transparency is not indulging or being right about emotions, about an emotion. Emotions have no justification. Emotions are not justifiable. Why? Because they simply are. There is no way to justify an emotion. So there's no point in indulging an emotion or being right about it. It's all about learning from it, which I'll get to on the next slide. Transparency is not insisting on a position, posture, or solution. And I'll get to that on the slide after this next one. Authentic emotional transparency is disclosing the gold within our emotions instead of indulging or being right about the emotions themselves. What is the emotion trying to teach me? If I say, oh, I'm just being honest, I'm angry, you may very well be angry, but that's true but not useful. If you say to me instead, you know what, I have a boundary, I have a no or an ouch, that my anger alerted me to, that I want to tell you about, that starts to get into the realm of useful. That's authentic emotional transparency, one example of it. Authentic intentions transparency is disclosing to others our core intentions that are underneath our positions or postures or proposed solutions, rather than insisting on 
our positions, postures, or solutions, that those are the best way, the right way, to meet an intention. That's a prescription for a, a tug-of-war, an arm wrestling match. Who's right? That doesn't lead to collaboration. It leads to competition. So what percentage of your clients have high-level emotional and intelligence transparency competence? Well, I'll leave that to you to decide for yourself. <coughs> Limiting beliefs, psychological reversals that block transparency, well, if, I, if I'm transparent, that is going to cause others to have power over me. Well, there's a line from A Course in Miracles, in my vulnerability, my safety lies. So how attentive and proficient are you in helping your clients become effectively transparent uh, through elevating mindset, removing blocks, and upgrading skills? The third power key is co-creation. There are four engagement styles. Coercion is manipulation and capitulation, giving in. Second is competition, scarcity thinking. There's not enough go that, to go around. Therefore, we have to vie for who has control or validation or safety or the money or whatever. Compromise is attempting to lose the least. Best attainable outcome with compromise is all parties, best case, all parties walk away from the negotiating table feeling equally ripped off. And co-creation, that's the engagement style to go for. Authentic collaborative synergy. What's truly good for me serves what's truly good for all, and vice versa. Co-creation prerequisites our self-responsibility and authentic transparency. But co-creation also requires teachable humility, a synergy mindset, the ability to integrate tensions instead of either or, both and, is what tensions integration or tensions competence is. Commitment competence and accountability literacy, being literate about how to actually be accountable. Well, what percentage of your clients have high-level co-creation competence? Limiting beliefs, PRs that block co-creation, tensions phobia, afraid of entering into the both and, having to stay in the either or, and belief in scarcity. How attentive and proficient are you in helping your clients become more proficiently and productively co-creative through an elevated mindset, removing blocks and upgrading skills? Well, in closing, what will you do? My hypothesis is that the more masterful our clients become at integrating self-responsibility, transparency, and co-creation, the stronger their ethical personal power effectiveness will grow, the more their positive impact in the world will expand, the happier and more fulfilled they'll become, and the more they'll help to elevate our society. So we've named three tactics poisoning our clients' relationships with power, adolescent rebellion, learned helplessness, and trying to reform the unteachable. Defining ethical personal power effectiveness, acting in masterful ways that keep my well-being in my hands and positively uplift people and events. And three beliefs that block self-responsibility, transparency, and co-creation, the ingredients of effective personal power and healthy ethical personal power. Self-responsibility makes me guilty or lets all others off the hook. Transparency gives others power over me and co-creation is impossible. Compromise is the best that can be hoped for and lack of tensions, competence, and belief in scarcity. So elevate mindset, remove blocks, and upgrade skills. It's all of those things. I think it's an ethical imperative for our field to take power by the horns and help our clients develop right relationship with it. If we don't do this, who will? <laughs>